Good afternoon. Welcome to NSF Health Sciences webinar, Data Integrity, the Fingerprint of a Company's Processes and Products. My name is Alexandra Markle, and I'm a practice manager with NSF Health Sciences Pharma Biotech. I will be acting as the moderator for today's presentation. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. We expect this webinar to last about one hour, including Q&A but I would like to specify that this webinar is for informational purposes only and is not a formal training class. As such, no certification or recognition of attendance will be issued to participants. Please also note that this presentation is being recorded and will be available for future playback on our website. Following this webinar, a PDF version of the slides will be emailed to you. All participant phone lines are muted and will remain so for the duration of the webinar. To ask a question, click the chat button at the top left of your ReadyTalk window. Feel free to submit your questions at any time during the presentation, and we will answer your questions with a Q&A session at the conclusion. If you are watching this webinar as a recording and have any unanswered questions, please send them to the email address uspharma at nsf.org. Now I would like to introduce our speaker for today. Rocco Duran is a pharmacist by education and has over 33 years of experience in the pharma biotech industry. He has worked for a number of large multinational companies and has also worked as a pharmacist in retail and in the hospital setting. Rocco has held roles of increasing responsibilities throughout his career in the areas of pharmaceutical development, pharmaceutical technology, production, quality control, quality assurance, and compliance. He has been responsible for successful preparation and handling of multinational regulatory inspections from agencies such as the FDA, MHRA, Health Canada, and Anvisa, as well as managing 483s and warning letters and being a part of a whistleblower lawsuit case. Rocco is well-versed in the areas of quality management systems, quality risk management, culture of quality, and supply chain improvements, just to name a few. He is also a member of IS. PE, who has been a guest speaker at ISPE conferences and who has been involved with the ISPE's recommendations to FDA on the Quality Metrics Initiative. Now at this time, I'd like to hand over the mic. Rocco, please go ahead. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, uh, this is uh, a data integrity webinar, and I'm glad to, uh, to note that uh, for this webinar, we really have what I would consider standing room only. Um, we had an overwhelming response to, uh, to this data integrity webinar, which is a reflection of the interest in this topic and the importance in this topic in our industry. Um, as, as Alexandra mentioned, this is a data integrity uh, webinar. It's, um, it's going to be a high-level overview of data integrity, as you can imagine. In, in one hour, it's almost impossible to cover all the details regarding data integrity. But it'll certainly give you an overview of some of the, some of the, some of the most uh, pressing uh, topics or areas of data integrity. And, and hopefully, we'll leave you with a little more information, uh, depending on your level of, of awareness and understanding on this topic. Um, before I begin, um, I'd like to just mention three key things um, uh, as it relates to data integrity. Uh, data integrity is, is a risk that's inherent in our business. It really, and, and, and for that fact, it's not only inherent in our business, really inherent in any highly regulated uh, uh, business or industry. But certainly, we have to recognize that data integrity is an inherent risk, and at best what we could do is try to manage, control, and, uh, and detect when these, when these issues crop up in, in our operations. Um, the other is that data integrity is not a new issue. I know data integrity is a hot topic in the industry right now, but data integrity is not a new issue, uh, and for those of us who have been in the industry for many, many years, we can cite a number of landmark cases as well as smaller cases that have taken place throughout the years. And in fact, a lot of the data integrity issues in the past or even currently uh, have been cited as, as, as just CGMP violations and not necessarily classified as data integrity issues. So although it's a hot topic, 
I think it's because uh, the awareness has been raised. Uh, some of the more inflammatory and flagrant uh, violations that have occurred in some of the emerging countries, in particular India and China. However, it's, I think it's, it's worth noting that this is not, is not a new issue. And, and then um, the, the third thing is that in terms of my presentation, um, as, as Alexandra mentioned, I'm a pharmacist by background. And one of the things that I, I've seen throughout my career is the fact that when we speak about um, the industry and the way we manage our risks within the industry and control our processes, we, also, we all, always seem to focus on regulatory expectations and compliance. Um, one of the things that I'm going to try to, to do with this presentation it certainly keep the patient-centric focus. For me, data integrity as well as CGMP and controlling our processes and risks uh, in order to launch and commercialize successful high-quality products is really first and foremost about patient health and safety. It's, it's important to understand the regulations. It's important to understand what the expectations of the regulators are. But I think as an industry, we've we've kind of fallen on our sword by always trying to pay attention what, to what the regulators want and, and not necessarily understanding our processes and understanding our risks. So with that, um, let me start by um, covering the agenda. So hopefully by the end of this webinar, these are some of the areas that I would have uh, covered and, and spoken to you about. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the life cycle approach because depending on where you are in terms of your role and responsibility or your years of experience in the industry, data integrity is not a topic necessarily just for the commercialization of product. Uh, we're certainly talking about the entire life cycle approach. Um, so from research and development right through commercialization and, and post-market and surveillance. We'll talk a little bit about scope, the scope in terms of data integrity as it relates to this presentation, some of the potential outcomes with regards to um, efforts that are not successful in managing data integrity. We'll go over and review some examples of data integrity issues. And again, depending on your level of experience, your years in the industry, some, may be some of these may be familiar to you and some may not. Uh, and then briefly cover on some recommendations for preventing or mitigating the risk of data integrity issues. As I said, you know, uh, data integrity issues as well as some of the other risks that, uh, that come with our business is, is an area that we need to recognize and, and at best control, remediate, prevent, and, and or detect. And then certainly we'll talk about some of the regulatory expectations and requirements and as I said to you, you know, my focus, and hopefully after this webinar, the flavor that I'll give you for those who are, who are in attendance is that, you know, first and foremost for us, it should be patient-centric concern. I mean, we should understand the impact that these data integrity issues as well as these non-GMP compliant issues have on our patients and certainly be able to, uh, to manage those. And then we'll, we'll conclude the presentation. So why is data integrity so important? Um, well, for, for one, it, it really, if we, if we start with the, the basic premise that we are in the business of making products, and the only way we can do that is by having processes that are well controlled, data integrity will undermine the processes um, that, that you utilize to commercialize, to develop commercialized product, and, and, and also the decisions that need to be made. It, it increases the risk of com compromising the, the promise that we've made to patients uh, in terms of providing products that you know, meet safety, efficacy, purity, strength, and quality attributes. It can certainly have a negative health consequence to the patient so decisions are made by, uh, within a company 
in terms of development of products, tech transfer of products, testing of products, releasing of products, and certainly by the regulators when we submit applications in terms of being able to approve a product. These decisions are based on the data and information that's available and provided. And, and as such, making decisions to release a product with data or information that's faulty can certainly have a negative health consequence to, the patient, to our patients. And then, and then lastly, obviously, it can undermine and break the trust of patients, regulators, and shareholders. You know, one, we are, you know, we are professionals who are, have the fortunate opportunity to be in this business. And certainly, uh, having data integrity issues is not, is not one way to win the trust of, of uh, key stakeholders. So this is a, a quote I, I took from um, uh, Karen Takahashi, who's a senior policy advisor at FDA. And one of the things I did was uh, highlight the number of times the word trust comes up in her quote. And she says, data integrity problems break trust. In the time between inspections, we trust you to do the right thing. And if we finish an inspection and that trust has been broken, then we, go, then we need to go through a few exercises to build that trust again before we can go forward and trust you until the next inspection. And the reason I, I selected this particular quote was it struck me how many times the word trust was embedded in that, in that statement. And so certainly, um, as we look to the regulators who have the immense responsibility of protecting the, uh, the supply of medicines to patients in the U.S. and throughout the world, we need to recognize that the only way that they can be successful in protecting us, because not only are we you know, employees of the industry, employees of companies, but we're also consumers and patients, the only way the FDA and other regulators throughout the world can protect us is by ensuring that they have data and information that, that's accurate and complete in order to make the, the right decisions, whether to re, to approve or disapprove a product. So certainly, it's an important, important task. So let's, let's talk a little bit about definitions, because I always find that whenever we're talking about a particular subject, one of the stumbling blocks is having, having a conversation, having a discussion, making decisions, creating policies, when there's at times a, dis, a dissonance or disconnect between parties in terms of defining terms and, and defining what they're talking about. So in terms of uh, data integrity, uh, we certainly understand that data is the information that's collected and used as part of the life cycle approach to uh, commercializing a product and, 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 and post-commercializing a product. Uh, in terms of integrity, you know, the word means integral, accurate, and complete. And when you put the two words together, data integrity, it really talks about maintaining and ensuring the accuracy, completeness, and consistency consistency of data over the entire life cycle. So sort of, the, sort of like the picture on the slide, it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. It's making sure that the information is not only accurate, but it's complete, and that it provides a clear picture between the documents and what actually took place. So it's, so it's, it's, it's thinking about and understanding that our products, when we think of products, we really need to think about not only the physical entity, but the documentation that goes along with it. So what activities, what things took place during the course of researching, developing, tech transferring, commercializing, or post-commercializing a product? And one of the things, one of the concepts that we've heard in, in recent years is the fact that we can look at the business of commercializing product as a siloed approach or a siloed kind of business. We really need to look at it in terms of a life cycle approach. 
And certainly the, this concept is, is bore out in, in some of the ICH guideline, uh, guidance documents. But it talks about uh, data as it applies to data integrity, the data integrity requirements and concerns involve all the data and information and knowledge that's acquired and obtained from development through commercialization, and which is required as part of the, uh, the goal of uh, achieving product realization. So again, in order to, uh, to meet re the requirements of the a good, strong, robust quality management system, and some of the uh, uh, priority goals of ICHQ10 of product realization and maintaining a state of control, and for that matter, continuous improvement, we have to, we have to make sure that our focus is not a narrowed focus. And, and I know that at times, depending on our roles and responsibilities within our companies, within the industry, we tend to think very narrow about whether it's the GMP topics or in, in particular data integrity. But we need to make sure that we're thinking broadly so the data integrity is applicable as, as, as some of the GXP practices are applicable across the life cycle. In terms of scope, and I, as I said to you, this webinar being an hour long, uh, we'll, we won't have the opportunity to get into the level of detail required for some of these specific areas, but certainly understand that as it involves data integrity, it involves and concerns itself with paper-based processes or systems as well as electronic systems. And certainly there are, there are concerns that are particular each one of them. Uh, and in particular, a lot of the attention as of uh, in the last few years perhaps has been paid attention, paid more to electronic systems as more companies and more industries move from paper-based systems to electronic systems. And certainly that creates uh, a certain type of risk in terms of software, configuration, audit trails, security, and so forth. Uh, in terms of scope, when we talk about data integrity, we really need to understand that it involves all aspects of data and document management. So, uh, you know, it starts with, with creating and generating a document, whether it's an observation that's being made in a, in a design of experiment, uh, design of experiment uh, project, or whether it's uh, the shop floor operator making a recording on a batch record. It starts with the creation and the generation of data. It also involves the usage of data. So, so in terms of decisions that are made based on that data, uh, can, 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 can present themselves in terms of data integrity uh, issues. The movement of manip and manipulation of data. So the way you move and, and manipulate data, and certainly we're all familiar with the risks of having hybrid systems where you have paper-based systems or you're collecting raw data in a paper-based uh, uh, approach, and then transferring that data to an electronic system. We all certainly know the risk of making errors, uh, but certainly any time you, you move data from one area to another, uh, there's an inherent risk of errors taking place and, and the issue of data integrity cropping itself up. The storage of, of records and documentation. So again, uh, we all recognize, for example, official documents like specs, procedures, batch records, they have to have a certain life, uh, shelf life and archival kind of um, requirement. Uh, and the failure to do so, the failure to store these documents in an appropriate manner or in, for an appropriate length of time can also generate data integrity issues. Obviously, the destruction of records. You know, we, we really need to think about long and hard how we're managing this, uh, the destruction of records and, and what, what documentation is available to kind of uh, demonstrate that uh, if, if you've made decisions to destroy records, that those decisions are accurate and appropriate. And then certainly the disposal of records. So uh, it's not only 
um, the creation and generation of record, but still certainly understanding the entire life cycle of uh, record management. So one of the things that we, we need to talk about is how can data integrity be compromised? It can certainly be compromised by any one of these uh, ways and manners. And, and certainly uh, one of the things that I think uh, we need to understand is that um, as it relates to data integrity, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be intentional. There could be unintentional consequences or unintentional actions that result in data integrity issues. So for example, omitting information. And, that, and again, in any of these cases, we're talking, we, can, we, can, we can talk about both intentional and unintentional. So if, if information, for example, during the packaging of a product, if there's problems on the packaging line, and that information isn't necessarily captured in terms of the, the number of uh, units that are taken off the line, perhaps uh, inspected, broken down, reassembled, and put back on the line. Um, because we feel it's not important or not, not necessary or we just don't have that level of awareness, that omission can create a data integrity issue. An error. So we talked a little bit about these hybrid systems. So transferring data or information from a paper-based system to an electronic system or from one paper uh, record to another and making an error or making an error on a batch record or, uh, you know, can result in data integrity issues. And again, it could be unintentional or intentional. Changes, making changes. You know, we, I think in the industry, we spend a lot of time and certainly most companies have procedures in place for managing documents and document management, good, good document management procedures that describe for employees how to go about correcting records and making changes to records. But certainly, improper changes to records can result in data integrity. Obviously, deletion, deletion of information, um, uh, you know, erasing or doing away with uh, documentation or deleting the entire, uh, an entire sheet of uh, information can result in, in data integrity issues. And then destruction, you know, uh, as I said, you know, the types of re records you're destroying, why you're destroying them, you know, can certainly lead to data integrity. And I think fundamentally the most important thing when we talk about, you know, the different things that can result in in data integrity issue is that when we talk about data integrity issue, I think for most people, uh, the thing that comes to top of mind is that somebody is willfully intending to falsify, misinterpret, or create some fraudulent kind of activity. And that's not the case. I would say that uh, those are the typical cases that get most of the media attention and most of the uh, press. but there's a, the majority of data integrity issues are not necessarily intentional. Um, and so this is one of the things that we, we in the industry need to keep an eye out, eye out for and control. So what are some, of ex, some if examples? And, and, and as I said, depending on how many years in the industry you've, 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 um, you've had or of what experiences you've had, some of these may be familiar, some not. So not documenting activities or failing to document activities at the time performed. So pre or post dating. <clears throat> so we've all come across this situation perhaps during our, our careers uh, where someone fails to document, document something and perhaps does it you know, later on or, or perhaps uh, they're, they're thinking about doing an activity or getting ready to do an activity and go ahead and they go ahead and sign a document or a batch record, uh, that's, that's an example of data integrity issue. Obviously testing and discarding data or testing and only reporting passing data. So again, we've, we've seen and heard examples where, you know, in the laboratory, tests, tests are performed, results uh, are generated and perhaps some of them are out of trend or out of spec. They're, uh, they're either investigated and not investigated, reported and not reported. But certainly 
again, in terms of data integrity, it doesn't provide a full picture of what actually took place. So in terms of the records, they need to be transparent. If you do, if you, if you do some testing in the lab uh, and you generate some results that are uh, unexpected, those, those records are official <clears throat> and can be dis, dis, uh, discarded. And this also applies to clinical trial results, like I said. It applies to uh, you know, animal studies, preclinical studies, clinical studies, tech transfer, the whole life cycle. Backdating, the same thing. Uh, again, it doesn't represent accurately uh, what took place. So backdating, you know, the, the, doing an activity one day and showing that it, it was done previously, that's, uh, that, that presents itself as a data integrity issue. Fabricating data or using previously generated data. So again, just coming up with data and not necessarily doing the activity, whether it's some kind of test, whether it's some kind of design of experiment, project, whatever, whatever work your, your, uh, your employees are particularly working on, if they're generating data that actually doesn't represent what took place or, or using previously generated data, such as, such as a cut and paste kind of mentality, uh, well, you know, I've done this test before on this product, this product always has an, you know, uh, an assay of 95% or so, um, you know, I'm tight for time here. I don't have the time to do the test. I'm just going to record the, you know, the result is 95%. <clears throat> transfer your data incompletely. So again, you know, the transfer, we talked a little bit about this, transferring data. And again, it doesn't have to have intent, but if, if you transfer data and forget to transfer some of the data, uh, or make an error in doing that transfer, again, that, that can be, uh, that can be labeled as data integrity. Missing, altered, or raw data not being captured in documents but in loose pieces of paper. I think for a lot of us, we've seen this where uh, employees uh, hand write information on loose pieces of papers, <clears throat> whether it's results of tests or information uh, regarding uh, how to do a, a, a task. Uh, and again, these, these, uh, these documents, uh, this data now becomes uh, really raw data. So, uh, and it's, 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 an, it's not necessarily appropriate and certainly shouldn't be the case, but um, I've had situations where, where a laboratory chemist was actually um, uh, documenting the, the, the batches that she, she was testing. Um, and, and the day and the time and, and some other meta, meta, metadata um, for, for, her personal, for her personal use and record um, and primarily to maintain uh, uh, track of, of the overtime she was working. Um, during an inspection, that, uh, that, that information uh, uh, came up uh, and the, the inspector at the time made the statement that any, any information you capture as part of, you know, researching, developing, tech transferring, commercializing product is official data and it's not, it's not necessarily consider, considered personal data no matter what the intent is. So again, it's something that we need to be on the lookout for. Electronic files used for capturing data, uh, not having audit trails that capture changes to records again. You know, this is, uh, I think, one of the most basic tenets in terms of electronic files. Do your electronic files have a way to determine who, who has the, the appropriate access to those records? And, and furthermore, if the changes were made, when, when were those changes made and who made the changes? So making decisions and generating reports based on missing or incomplete or non-supported data. So again, this is, uh, this is one we don't think often about, but making decisions and generating reports based on data that's faulty or incomplete or doesn't support those decisions is a data integrity issue. And, and I know in, in this day and age, when we're all frantically looking for ways to, um, uh, to meet some of the expectations of, of of the, the uh, 
internally within our companies and also from regulators in terms of metrics and metrics reporting, uh, one of the things we need to be really cautious about is, uh, for example, reporting on deviations, reporting on change controls, reporting on OOSs. Is the data is the data accurate and complete? Because the decisions we're making, in particular, uh, as we conduct these management review meetings that are uh, expected from ICHQ10 and in, in a good, robust quality management system, the decisions we're making based on that data is only as good as that data. So again, making sure that that data is complete and accurate. Uh, obtaining results and recording data and information incorrectly. And again, this could be, uh, you know, uh, a, an error. Somebody just uh, in, in the process of, you know, recording the, the results uh, makes an incorrect entry. Uh, not capturing infra information during batch processing steps. And I mentioned the, uh, the example <clears throat> where, in my experience in, in, in the industry, in particular in the packaging area, uh, during commercial production, um, there's a lot of activities that go on, and, and for some reason, my experience has been that area seems to, to be managed a little bit different than when you're uh, uh, processing the product itself before you get to packaging, but any, any activities that take place that are uh, impactful on the, the quality, strength, purity, and identity of the product need to be captured in the records. Materials and samples not being labeled properly. Again, it's a data integrity issue. It doesn't, it doesn't provide accurate representation of the materials or the samples that were taken. Releasing batches based on failing results or discounting results without investigating. So again, uh, making a decision, based, a decision to release based on data that says the batch did not pass or did not meet specifications is a data integrity issue. Or just plainly re discounting the results without investigating um, uh, can be, can be uh, labeled as a data integrity issue. Having lack of controls in electronic system against unauthorized changes, and we spoke about these, certainly making sure that the, the folks that have access to your systems are qualified uh, and that um, there's some way for you and the system to denote when the, the individual individuals went into the records, whether they have read access only or read and, 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 read and change access, uh, and, and what particular changes were made. Um, so, so those are important components of an electronic system. And then failure to back up electronic systems. And again, this goes back to the, the fact that you, if you fail to back up electronic systems and you have some kind of electronic failure, are you going to be able to, to, to get your hands on the, on the records and the documents uh, if, if you had an electronic system crash? So, what, so, so now that we talked a little bit about uh, some of the examples that, and, and like I said, this is not an exhaustive list by, by any means, and certainly I'm sure you've had other experiences and seen other things, but what are some of the, uh, some of the things that we can consider or think about in terms of uh, preventing or mitigating the risk of data integrity issues? You know, uh, as I said to you before, I think the thought of completely eliminating data integrity issues is uh, the only way to do that really is to be, <laughs> not to be in the, in the business uh, that we're in, but uh, certainly one of the things we could do is uh, try to prevent, try to mitigate, or the very, at the very least ensure that we have good detection mechanisms so that when these things do occur, we can address them and address them quickly. <clears throat> so one of the first things is that and you'll see these, uh, these recommendations as well in some of the uh, regulatory expectations, but really you, your firm should have a, a comprehensive data integrity approach and strategy that really applies across the life cycle and covers the way you're going to manage data uh, uh, from beginning to end. And, you know, what a, do you have policies in place in terms of data integrity? Do you have training for your employees in terms of data integrity? Um, are your procedures adequate? 
Uh, what about your uh, self inspections and your audit uh, you know, uh, programs? Do they integrate debt integrity concerns uh, and, 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 and uh, assessment? Um, you, you really should have a way to risk assess and come up with risk control or control strategy plans to ensure that uh, data integrity is properly managed. So one of the things, um, you know, certainly uh, quality risk management is becoming more and more integrated into the quality management system across companies. But certainly one of the things, um, you know, that, that would be helpful is uh, to ensure that within your companies you have an opportunity to determine where you have potential risk of data integrity issues. So, you know, whether it's a flow charting a process, flow charting, you know, uh, you know doing a schematic of a, a particular area and saying, okay, you know, this is where we generate doc documentation or data. Uh, this is where we uh, store it, transfer it, manage it, change it. Uh, create a flow chart and determine based on those steps what are, what are the potential failure modes, what are the potential risks that can occur in those particular areas. And then, and then ask yourself, what is our current control strategy? So for example, if I'm, if I'm generating data in the laboratory and the, the analyst or the chemist are generating this data manually and writing them in a, in a lab notebook. Um, what are my controls in terms of ensuring that da that data is captured correctly? Do I do a you know done by and check by? If that data is now transferred to a LIM system, you know what are my controls? What are my checks to make sure that the data the analyst is entering is accurate, complete, uh, the correct data? So, you know, do, flow chart your processes in the different areas and determine whether, what are the potential failure modes and what are your current controls and whether you, you believe they're adequate or not. Um, so, we mentioned this policies, procedures, training, and controls aspects should be routinely monitored and audited. So, so in terms of your comprehensive uh, governance approach to data integrity, whether it's your policies, your procedures, the, the way you, you've organized your personnel, the training you're giving those personnel, you should have a periodic review uh, and assessment of how well these, uh, this governance program is, is, is working or not working. And it really should be done before you start having any issues. So, you know, plan on a periodic assessment that reviews and says, you know, what changes have we had uh, in the business? What changes have we had in, had in our personnel? What changes are we seeing in, in, in the external environment? Are these governance, uh, is our governance uh, or comprehensive approach to data integrity still sound, or do we need to make any uh, improvements? And, and then data integrity, performance, and control should be a topic of quality, quality management review meetings or quality council. So, Again, my experience has been, um, you know, we, there's certainly a number of topics that, that, that get discussed at, at quality councils, and in particular, some of, the more, uh, some of the more common quality measures or metrics, such as, you know, deviations, investigations, complaints, so forth and so on. But rarely do I see, uh, in, rarely do I see the, the topic of, uh, data management or data integrity being discussed. And it's not to say that if you have a, uh, a quality council meeting on a monthly basis that this should be a topic that should be brought up every month. Perhaps it's a topic that you bring up uh, once a quarter or every six months or at the very least once a year. But certainly one of the things that's important in terms of data integrity manage manage management and setting the right tone for the organization is that employees See and understand that senior leadership uh, makes data in integrity a top priority within their company. Firms uh, must ensure that procedures and practices are in alignment with the requirements by employees to document completely, maintain good records, and, and overall follow good documentation practices. So again, uh, 
again, my experience has been a lot of times companies have procedures uh, and practices uh, in terms of how to manage documents, how to make corrections, or how to manipulate or store data that's not necessarily practical or appropriate, and there's uh, at times the disconnect between what's in procedures and what employees are being asked to do or not to do. Uh, so again, take a look at that and see if you know, you're setting your employees up you know, for, for potential failures by, by ensuring that these procedures you know, are achievable and appropriate. Uh, one of the things that's important is that you know, the, the, whole, the whole topic of ensuring that employees follow procedures, I, I mean, we're, we're used to the fact that, you know, that's, that's certainly a GMP requirement. Uh, but uh, one of the things, in, again, one of the things that I've observed during my career is that um, for the most part, when it comes to the laboratory, we see the chemists and the analysts are reviewing, you know, having their uh, methods open while they're doing their tests. Um, when you go on the shop floor or when you go in the research and development area uh, and you ask for procedures, typically it takes a bit of time to, to get the employees to find where the procedures are located. Uh, and when you ask them to, to describe to you the process that they follow and then, and then ask for the procedures, you invariably see that what they're telling you differs from what the procedure states. So again, uh, this, is, this is an area where I think most companies don't do a good job, is ensuring that employees follow procedures and that the procedures actually reflect the practices of the employees. Uh, I've heard the term um, uh, tribal knowledge being, being used where employees find, find a different way to do work and find a different way to, to run the process simply because it's easier simply because they don't want to engage the change control system, which is very uh, archaic or complex. And then all of a sudden you have this misalignment between what employees are doing and what the procedures call for them to do. So again, that's an area that, that's important. And then <clears throat> firms and companies must ensure that if they're using electronic and automated systems, that you know, they've, they've been designed properly, you know, designed for the intended purposes, that they're properly qualified, validated, controlled, and operating properly. Uh, and as I said, this is becoming more and more a concern as companies are going, looking for efficiency and moving away from paper-based systems to electronic systems. Uh, and some of them, which are not off the shelf, but highly configurable uh, and adapted to the, to the firm's operations, require a, a, a greater um, scrutiny in terms of some of the qualification and validation processes that they must go through. So in terms of the regulator's expectation, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> as I said, data integrity, although we've heard all the issues coming out of countries like India and China, by, by no means should any, any one of us feel or think that this is, this is isolated to that area of the, of the world. Data integrity is an issue <clears throat> for the entire industry across the globe, um, and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, the majority is not uh, willful intent, but it does, it does exist in every company. Uh, and, and the FDA has stated the following. It, it's foundational to the relationship with them. So they feel, you know, this is, this is the way you build trust. Uh, it, it makes a, a path forward uh, after an inspection that, that identifies data integrity much more difficult. Uh, and one of the, the, the interesting thing is that they've stated the life science industry and the issue of data, uh, data integrity is predominantly a human organizational issue. And, and this, is, this is very true. And, um, you know, we, we won't have time to go into it in, in this webinar, but the issue of culture, the, the culture of quality within a company, the leadership, what's important to leadership, what's important to employees, how, you know, how employees behave and think about um, data and managing data, that's important in terms of data integrity. Intent is not, necessary, uh, is not necessarily a factor in, in data integrity issues. 
Uh, willful intent certainly is egregious uh, and serious and criminal, but uh, it doesn't have to be intent. Somebody forgets to record something or somebody makes a mistake in recording something. These are things that you should and your firm should take seriously. And they, they also have said they will forcefully execute enforcement actions on companies that, that exhibit that integrity issues. And as, as many of you know, the FDA has also established an application integrity policy and program that was uh, put in place in 1991, which uh, focuses on the integrity of data and information that's submitted to the agency. And as I said, as it relates to data integrity, it's not only the, the information we generate for the purposes of um, developing and, and, and transferring and commercializing product and testing product, but also the information we provide to regulators for them to make decisions of whether our product is safe and effective uh, for the marketplace. And uh, in terms of the MHRA, uh, in December of 2013, they came out with an expectation that manufacturers, importers, and contract labs self-inspection programs must review the effectiveness of, the gov of their governance systems uh, to be able to identify and, and correct data integrity issues. Uh, and, and, and if you outsource some of your activities, that that expectation is also placed on the company you're outsourcing from. So whether it's, you know, the, the inspection program is looking at your internal uh, operations or whether it's looking at those uh, operations that you've outsourced, uh, the expectations are still the same. And uh, they've been covering this as part of inspection since uh, 2014. So that's, that's a requirement and expectation that MHRA has had. One of the things that MHRA has done, and I've, in terms of, uh, I mean, all the regulatory agencies, including Health Canada and some of the others, have certainly, you know, provisions within their uh, re regulations in terms of uh, GXP and, and good documentation practices and data integrity. But one of the things that um, I find interesting, MHRA has really taken a lead role kind of in in putting out this, this guidance for industry, uh, which has provided some key points, you know, they've said, you know, data integrity is fundamental in a, pharmacy, uh, in a pharmaceutical quality system. Uh, they've come out and said it's, it's intended to be complement the, the European uh, good manufacturing practice regulations. Um, this data government, governance uh, expectation requirement should be integral to the quality management system. Uh, and they're not expecting you to have a forensic approach. In other words, uh, they, don't, they don't expect you to necessarily, you know, put on your Sherlock Holmes kind of hat and, and constantly be looking for criminality when you, within your operation. But certainly you should have, you know, you should have done some risk assessments, you should have a good governance model, and you should certainly have ways of detecting uh, when these data integrity issues crop up. Uh, they apply in terms of their expectations. It goes on to say that these requirements apply equally to manual and electronic data. Uh, you should have a, a, an overarching data governance system. Um, should be the, the, the level and effort regarding data integrity risk should be based on level of, of effort uh, and, and whether as it relates to electronic systems, whether your systems are uh, simple systems or highly configurable uh, complex systems. And they do provide uh, a, a diagram which I have in this presentation. But again, they, they provide some key points and they give <coughs> uh, some, some guidance on, on the way the system should, do, should be designed uh, in a way to encourage compliance with the principle of data integrity. Some, some very basic, for example, access to clocks for recording time events. A very simple uh, kind of uh, notion. If, if you're requesting operators to generate data that's, uh, that they need to require time, well, if in the area they don't have a clock uh, and, and you don't allow them to wear watches because it's part of the, the gowning requirements, how, how the heck are they recording the, the, the time for the event? You know, accessibility of batch records are locations where I've seen operations where, where an operator is working on, a, on an activity and the batch record is like two or three rooms 
uh, down the hallway. Uh, and a lot of times for the sake of expediency and convenience and efficiency, they won't take the time to go all the way down and document what they did because they would take a long time. So they just go about doing their stuff and then, you know, an hour later or two hours later, they go back to the record and, and enter the, uh, the recording. So again, some of these are some simple, basic uh, examples and some are more sophisticated as it relates to uh, electronic systems. And again, this is a, a, a replication of some of the diagrams they include in the guidance document showing you know, the, the, in terms of your control uh, and your risk of data integrity, it depends on, on whether you're using simple systems that have a printout or complex systems where you may have a printout, but the printout is not necessarily representative um, because it has some complex software. <clears throat> it talks about the use of scribes and when, you know, when, when that's allowed and, and the exceptional cases. Uh, obviously, if the recording would pose risk to the product, for example, in sterile processing, you might not have the documentation in the uh, sterile area or to accommodate literacy limitations. But again, these are exceptional cases. They should be described fully in your procedure and you should adhere to, uh, to your procedures. And then they go in, in, in detail uh, as to if you use a scribe, you know, the following must apply. The scribe records, uh, recording must be contemporaneous with the task. So the, the, the criteria for uh, contemporaneous recording is still in place. Both the person performing the task and the person completing the record must be identified. And it's understood that the, performing, the person performing the task uh, should countersign whenever possible, and it's recognized that that will take place retrospective, but the record should reflect that. And these, and these re, uh, exceptions uh, and considerations should be described in an SOP. They also go on to, and I, and I think a lot of you have seen this acronym, ALCOA, data must be attribu attributable to the person generating the data, not someone else. It should be legible and permanent. So, you know, someone writing data that can be read is, is, is a data integrity issue. It's got to be contemporaneous, you know, at the time it occurred. It's got to be original and it's got to be accurate. And then it goes into defining a lot of the terms that we use in the industry. You know, what, what's the difference between data and raw data and metadata and data integrity and so forth and so on. And I think, you know, this is very useful in particular if you're just starting, you know, to raise your level of awareness within your firm or this is a topic area you're just starting to, to vigorously manage. Uh, some, some additional terms that they, um, they go into defining. And this slide just gives you an example. I mean, we could probably, you know, create it, you know, 10, 20, 30 slides of examples of companies uh, that have gone into, uh, into trouble, regulatory uh, issues with, with uh, regulators. And, you know, it could be anything from a 43 to a warning letter to a consent decree to an injunction to uh, uh, import, uh, import alert. I mean, you know, the, 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 the range of enforcement action goes from very simple to very, very, um, very uh, serious. Um, and, and as I said, this is not necessarily something that is only happening in India and China. I think those, those uh, areas of the world are, are getting a lot of the attention. Um, but certainly do not fool yourself into thinking that your firm is exempt from data integrity issues. I would be very provocative in saying that um, given the opportunity to audit your, your firm or your operations, I could come up with data integrity issues. Um, so in, ter in conclusion, uh, what are some of the things that hopefully you take away from this webinar uh, is that data integrity is, is for me and, and for all of us work, having the privilege to work in the, in the biopharmaceutical space, it's fundamental to guaranteeing the supply of safe, effective medicines to patients, to our families, to ourselves. I mean, this is, this is the North Star for me. Uh, whether you're talking about GMPs, whether you're talking about data integrity, uh, the first and foremost concern and consideration sh should not be what, what does the regulators expect from us, but how do, we, how do we manage the risks in our operations and therefore not put patient health and safety at risk. 
Um, it's a constant risk in your operation. So it's, it's not something that's one and done. It's constant, and your vigilance has to be constant. Intent is not necessary for data integrity to be an issue. So, uh, w you know, willful intent is criminal, uh, but certainly uh, errors, uh, not documenting information that should have been doc documenting, transcription errors, whatever have you, those, those also count towards data integrity concerns. Um, and, and, and having good document data management procedures is, and, and a healthy culture of quality is key to prevention. And again, I mentioned the, 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 uh, the criteria or the, the topic of leadership and attitudes towards ma uh, managing data and transparency, that's key to prevention. And then finally, having a strong, vigilant, and dynamic governance program necessary, is necessary in controlling and having a good surveillance strategy. Uh, as I said, dynamic because um, you, you really need to assess your governance uh, program periodically and determine it's keeping up with, with the potential uh, threats and risks. Uh, within your operations and, and the expectations from the external environment. So uh, that concludes the webinar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and select some questions, see if we have some questions here in our chat, chat room. Um, uh, can you provide a, a copy of this presentation to us? Yeah, the, as Alexandra said, this presentation will be available. Uh, for all attendees and those who didn't have a chance to attend. Uh, let's see. What would be a good key performance indicator, indicator for measuring data integrity for discussions and quality management review meetings? So that's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, so certainly, uh, as I mentioned, data integrity should be something that should be reviewed uh, and discussed periodically at, at Quality Councils and Management Review meetings. Certainly one of the things you, you can consider is, you know, how robust is your self-inspection program? So if your self-inspection, whether it's your, uh, you know, the, the unit has a self-inspection program or whether you're talking about the global corporate program, you know, uh, ensure that perhaps you discuss the number of observations where you've seen potential risks or actual observations regarding data integrity. And, I, and as I said, you know, an employee following, not following a procedure or procedures not necessarily being available uh, in the area, uh, having a disconnect between what's going on on the shop floor or having a disconnect between what's going on in the development uh, area in terms of uh, manufacturing development batches could certainly be a, a, key, a key performance indicator, could certainly be a topic of discussion. In terms of observations, these are the number of observations we've seen. Um, uh, that, that could certainly be one, one KPI, KPI to think about. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we have any others here. Uh, Okay, uh, currently most of data integrity expectations around Alcoa approach. Is this approach, is is this approach sufficient or does the scope need to be elaborated? Well, as, again, as I mentioned to you, that Alcoa acronym is something that a lot of the regulators are using. Uh, certainly, I would say to you, take a look at some of the examples, in particular the ones that uh, don't necessarily fit that Alcoa acronym and determine for yourself you know, uh, what's the basis for determining whether this is a data integrity issue? So basically what you want to ask yourself is, are the activities that are impactful to, product, uh, to the product, uh, whether it's in development, in tech transfer, in commercialization, are they properly documented? Are they properly recorded? Is, are the, the documents properly stored, managed, controlled? Um, and how are we using that, those documents and that data to make decisions? Because you could be managing those documents correctly, but the decisions you're making off of those documents are not necessarily adequate. So again, that interface between document and data and decision making could be an issue regarding data integrity. 
as, as Alexandra said, uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, enough time to cover all the questions. There's, there's a lot of good, thoughtful questions. We'll certainly provide responses to those questions and post them on our website. But again, I want to thank you for your attention, your time. Uh, uh, this concludes the Data Integrity Webinar. Have a great day. Thank you.